Ex-Typhoon Awiniar strengthens near Alaska and we're still waiting for the first hurricane on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 3rd. So right now the main part of the tropical regions remain very quiet indeed. The only thing we're looking at is what's left of Typhoon Awiniar, which was a long time ago now. It's an extra tropical version, uh, not far off the coast of Alaska. And uh, to say that that's the biggest story right now tells you that there's very little going on elsewhere. Well, it's day three of Atlantic hurricane season and there's no areas of interest at the moment. A few little disturbances across uh, central uh, Greater Antilles up towards uh, uh, to the north there into the western Atlantic. But in general, the Atlantic is looking very quiet. The eastern Pacific, it's day 20 of hurricane season here, and there's a few little areas of disturbed weather, but really nothing out of the ordinary and certainly nothing of a tropical cyclone nature. Uh, will that change in the coming weeks? Well, it should do, but at the time, for the time being, it's looking very quiet. In the Western Pacific, after those two storms that we had not long ago, it's all back down to uh, quietness again here as well. Uh, a big area of cloud there off towards the southeast though over eastern Micronesia and a few little storms off the Philippines and southern China. In the Bay of Bengal, there's a few little areas of thunderstorms here as well across southern India and off the west coast of India too, but generally it's, je it's fairly quiet. A few thunderstorms blowing up over India this evening as well, but nothing of a tropical cyclone nature. Well, in the southwest Indian Ocean, we've still got that 10% area of interest for a system that's still battling on way down there. Uh, it's well into the off-season now in the southern hemisphere, but this system is still pushing along, but it really is pretty much out of time. It's got about 12 hours left before it really goes south for that system, so I really don't think that's going to form. Well, this is where Ex Iwiniar is located right now. It's 701 kilometers from Kodiak Island in Alaska, 1170 from Anchorage, 1236 from Sitka, 1343 from Juneau, and 1441 from Prince Rupert in Canada. That system will be moving generally eastwards. It's, it's strengthened a little bit. It's got winds of around 60 miles per hour now and a pressure estimate of about 975 millibars. So it's deepened a lot but we do expect it to weaken again before it reaches the coast. Let's check satellite imagery then. You can see that particular system, Exowiniar, uh, not blowing up significant cloud tops or anything like that. That's why it's an exotropical cyclone. You can see some clouds off to the southeastern side of it though that's uh, probably blowing up significant rain amounts, but really very little along this uh, system. It's more wind and more sporadic and uh, persistent. Uh, drizzly rainfall from this storm over the next few days across the coast of Alaska, maybe up to two inches of rain. Now this is the other system, Invest 94S, still a 10% chance on this as mentioned. There is uh, some signs of rotation underneath there, but really on the upper levels definitely it's looking very poor. Uh, a few areas of uh, convection blowing up over it. It probably looks a little bit better than it did yesterday, ironically, but it's still a long way away from becoming a tropical cyclone, and it really doesn't look like that's going to happen. Looking at the various imagery here on the Force 13 website, you can take a look at that floater right now. This is Invest 94S. <clears throat> well, looking at the Atlantic off the coast of the United States, there's a big extratropical low off uh, Nova Scotia, actually. Um, but looking further south, you've got general cloud cover over the area, nothing too spectacular. There is an area of disturbed weather just north of uh, the Dominican Republic and the Turks and Caicos Islands, which if it was later in the season might have become a tropical cyclone. And this is the eastern Atlantic off Africa, uh, looking quite quiet here, uh, not too much going on at all. And for the first time, we can take a look at new Force 13 shear graphics showing how the Atlantic is looking in terms of animated wind shear patterns. You can find this graphic for all of the basins <coughs> on the Force 13 website. So 
Not looking conducive for wind shear, by the way, over the Atlantic right now. There's the Eastern Pacific wide view. You can see a few little areas of blowing up there south of Mexico, uh, but still it really hasn't caught on yet in the Eastern Pacific. We haven't had our first storm yet at all. And this is the wind shear graphic there as well. Very low wind shear value south of Mexico, which is where these storms always form in the early part of the season. So it's really ready for anything to form, but it's not. We just haven't catched a storm yet haven't caught a storm yet well this is the western pacific <clears throat> a front moving through the northern philippines there and this is the wind shear graphic there as well the philippine sea looking decent south china sea looking okay as well for wind shear looking further east though it's quite high and in the north the jet stream really blowing everything else away and this is the bay of bengal region um, across uh, indochina as well and there's the arabian sea so a few storms uh, blowing up over there uh, but nothing organized well, let's check sea surface temperatures, which are obviously increasing in the eastern Pacific. A few spots of 26 degrees reaching Hawaii as well now. Uh, but the Gulf of California really warming up there too. The Gulf Stream off the U.S. East Coast really getting up there as well now. A few areas of 26 plus degrees Celsius waters off the Outer Banks. The Gulf of Mexico warming up nicely off the coast of Louisiana, 28 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees plus near Cuba and the Bahamas. The Western Pacific really getting hot now in the Philippines Sea, an area there of 32 degrees Celsius waters east of the northern Philippines and into the South China Sea, a similar number there as well. Temperatures increasing near Okinawa up to 28 degrees to its west. In the Bay of Bengal, temperatures still looking good there as well, even after the recent systems and the monsoonal rains, which will have uh, increased cloud cover and reduced those temperatures a little bit, but still 32 degrees in a few spots. In the southwest uh, Indian Ocean, we're looking at one or two spots there, still up to 28, 29 degrees Celsius, but in general, obviously all of these southern hemisphere regions are cooling. Here it is off Australia right now, a few warm spots still remaining there too although not really along the coast hardly any of coastal australia is up to 26 degrees celsius now which is to be expected uh, but a few spots up to 28 degrees and in the south pacific off uh, vanuatu still warm further north and in fiji a little bit to the north of there as well temperatures gradually decreasing here in the south pacific it's quite stable area it's going to be a slow reduction Compared to average then, the Atlantic is still extremely high uh, in some parts of the Central Atlantic, up to 3 or 4 degrees above average. Eastern Pacific is still hit and miss, so you see that big cool pool there off towards the northwest, but in the main area of development it's going to be uh, okay, 2 to 3 degrees above. Western Pacific generally around 2 degrees above average, and the North Indian Ocean is around 1 to 2 degrees above as well. So in all of the main areas that matter, the temperatures are looking very good compared to average. Oceanic heat content is still increasing as well in parts of the eastern Pacific. Two spots there, maybe three now, of orange, so looking quite good there. And in the western Pacific, really extremely high values there as well. Uh, well into the reds there off the Philippines, and storms can really take advantage of those areas. Similarly, in large parts of the Caribbean now, extending to the southeast of Jamaica, we're also looking at very high oceanic heat content values. Um, it really increases the... Uh, potential that these storms have if they track over these areas and could really uh, shows a high amount of uh, potential for rapid intensification. Let's check the GFS model then for the next five days. Now this is the Eastern Pacific. You'll see a little signature there off the coast of Guatemala and Southern Mexico of a little system trying to develop there towards the end of that five day period, getting towards the 8th of June there. Now, apart from that though, really nothing going on in the short range anywhere. Um, just this little signal that there might be a disturbance in the Eastern Pacific. It's certainly not a tropical storm there in that five day period. Really nowhere to show you for the rains, so we'll go and take a look at the Asia region uh, that's expecting the highest amount of rainfall in the next five days anywhere in the world pretty much. Monsoonal patterns continuing of course, and it will be mainly uh, those same areas we've been talking about in southern uh, Myanmar, which will be getting very high amounts of rain once again, maybe another 15 inches in the next five, uh, in the next seven days, that's nearly 400 millimeters, and up and above 12 inches in parts of northern Bangladesh and eastern India, parts of China getting to 13 inches, and parts of the Philippines getting to 12 inches as well, that's over 300 millimeters. 
so in the longer range it becomes a little bit uncertain as to what we might see in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific because there are two uh, little suggestions there there's a little thing there in the uh, Western Caribbean that tries to develop into a tropical cyclone it struggles at first and then something happens over there it might split and then there's a little thing that goes towards the Florida Keys a tiny system and then in the Eastern Pacific towards the very end of that 10 day period you can see a system forming I think at the end there uh, in the Gulf of Tehuantepec there it is becoming a tropical storm that is actually a tropical storm there but that is very far out near, near the 10 day period so I wouldn't be so sure about that scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our products as well as our full season and individual storm animations and are still waiting for a Hone t-shirt because that's the Central Pacific storm that we've been waiting for for five years. Well, in the long range, is there more hope for the Atlantic there? Well, that system does move through southern Florida and then out towards the east over the northern Bahamas, and then it curves back again. Very weak system, though, it has to be said. Barely reaches tropical storm status if it does so at all. And then another system there moving into Mexico towards the end of that 16-day period. It is a long way out. But the answer to the question of the video today, will there be a hurricane soon or something to that effect? Uh, no, it doesn't look like, but we could get some tropical storms there, uh, although they are looking quite weak. Well, on this day, it, we did have a proper hurricane. It was Hurricane Blanca in the Eastern Pacific on that supercharged 2015 Pacific hurricane season. There it is near its peak intensity of about 145 miles per hour. An extremely powerful storm to start off a very powerful season in the Eastern Pacific. Uh, elsewhere in the world, there was nothing else active. Uh, it was just Blanca. And of course, we were there covering that storm as well as it was occurring. Well, would you believe we are still code blue for Iwiniar due to its potential impacts in Alaska? Um, and that is where we're at right now. We've had 20 storms so far this year around the world. In the Atlantic, the, the first name is Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Aleta. And in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. We are 35% still below average for the time of year in, con in concerning um, accumulated cyclone energy. The next name in the Western Pacific though is Gaemi. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Asna. So, like I was saying there, 20 storms below average as well for the time of year there. The Australian region, the next name is Robin, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Jeremy if it's this month, otherwise it will roll over to a new list. And in the South Pacific, the next name is Pitta. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow. Become an ultimate fan today.